the RGPF promises tightened security for Convo. We'll have details to this story and more in the National Report. Welcome back. With the details to the news for Thursday, August 4th, 2022, I am Sherry Ann Noel. The Royal Grenada Police Force is tightening security for the carnival season. During a pre-carnival press conference on Thursday, the RGPF outlined operational measures for the season that include increased law enforcement presence and erection of vehicular checkpoints as part of this second phase of operations. Assistant Commissioner of Police John Mitchell said that these operational measures will help the force to create an environment that is safe and secure for citizens and visitors. Certainly, there will be increased law enforcement presence in and around hotspots, in and around our towns, communities, especially during nights of events and days also. We are mindful, very mindful, that people would be away from home and as a responsible organization, we have to pro provide that sort of protection. Hence, the reason for some of our law enforcement presence. The general public will certainly see and pass through a number of vehicular checkpoints on your way to major events. Do not see this as any inconvenience. The checkpoints are designed for your own security and safety. Property crimes are come for the highest recorded crime during the festive season. Officer in charge of crime, Superintendent Vanny Cowen, urges the public to practice safety measures for the season, especially when attending events. People park the vehicles in any place, any spot. And those vehicles in the past have become the target of criminals. And particularly leaving valuables in your vehicles that are visible from the outside is something that we, we want to discourage you to do. Um, if you must leave valuables in your vehicle, please make sure it is inconspicuous. Make sure it cannot be seen. So you put it in the cubby hole, put it under the seat. Do not leave, do not allow yourself to become sitting ducks by having your laptops on the seat that can be seen, seen from the outside, your wallets in between the seat that can be seen, jewelry, watches and, 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 and other valuables that someone can see from outside. That will only make your vehicle become a target. Moving along, the pension secretariat established by the Ministry of Finance to expedite data processing for the November 2022 pension payout will commence operations from Wednesday, August 10th. That's according to Prime Minister Honorable Deacon Mitchell, who spoke of the establishment of the Secretariat during a recent luncheon with the business sector. He explained to members of the media on Wednesday that Cabinet has approved the timeline and mechanism to be implemented for payment of pension to eligible individuals. Government will use the months of August and September to finalize and process data so that payments can be made on time. The Secretariat will be open next Wednesday and the Secretariat will be in a position to begin, to begin processing applications by persons who are affected. And so we will use the months of August and September to do the processing, to ensure that all of the data is collected, to ensure that all of the administrative work, including receiving life certificates, notarization of any documents, uh, a review process, and sign off by the audit department, the accountant general's department occurs within that two month period. We intend to, if necessary, uh, bring to parliament supplementary appropriation bills to ensure that the financing is available to pay the retroactive uh, aspect of this. Our timeline for doing this would be uh, by the end of October. Uh, we therefore expect to be in a position that by 15th November 2022, 
all payments will be made, giving us an additional two weeks from the 15th to the 30th of November to address any mopping up issues uh, that may have to be addressed. The Secretariat will be located at the Kaipo building between Lucas Street and Mount Welldale. The Ministry of Culture is supporting local artists who are participating in the Groovy and Soka finals at the National Stadium on Friday. During a meeting with the artists on Wednesday, August 3rd, agreement was reached on measures to provide support for the artists on stage presentations. They include covering the basic price for stage fees at $5,000, accommodation for access to changing rooms for the artists, as well as stage props, and the allowance of a minimum of 15 backstage passes for workers per artist with an option to purchase additional at half price. The stage presentation fee of the $5,000 forms part of associated cost, which as they indicated, made it impossible for them to organize a suitable presentation for the night. The decision to assist comes because of the entertainment industry's financial situation post-COVID-19 and the fact that artists are left with debt after the carnival season. The check will be payable to the Spice Mask Corporation, SMC, through the National Lotteries Authority, the NLA, for every finalist on the night of the competition. The Groovy and Soka finalists met with the Minister for Youth, Sports and Culture, Honorable Ron Redhead, and Permanent Secretary Norman Gilbert. This is the National Report. The news will continue after the break. Ladies and gentlemen, the final of the Groovy Soka and Power Soka Monarch is here. Friday, August 5th at the National Stadium. Battling it out for the Groovy Monarch will be Papa Jerry, EC, Royalty, Lil Jello, Scholar and Papi Boy, Crave, Brother B, Abby Moraine, Looney Spark and Electrify, Mr. Walkie, and Hits. And attempting to take the Power Soka Monarch crown will be Terror the Governor, Jab King, Lil Jello, Pinky Fabulous, Lead Neck, Mellow, Stunner, Super Flying Flint, Looney Spark and Electrify, Mr. Walkie, and Hits. Admission $100, more on the day, or experience it front stage in our premium all-inclusive VIP for $500. There will also be special guest appearances on the night. The quest is on to crown the groovy and power Soka Monarch for 2022. Who will it be? Friday, August 5th from 8 p.m. National Stadium. The battle is on. Powered by the National Lottery Authority. Flow and Cara Brewery. Welcome back. Grenadian educators, coaches, and parents are being encouraged to participate in the inaugural Caribbean Literacy Summit, geared toward improving literacy within the Caribbean region. The virtual session will be held on Friday, August 5th, and will highlight the significance of the science of reading and reading development, explicit and systematic phonics instructions, authentic writing strategies, and assessment. Keynote speaker and educator from neighboring Trinidad and Tobago, Lynnett Tyson Noel, told GIS the sessions are critical to resolve and address the negative literacy issues affecting the Caribbean. Different countries will have different levels of literacy achievement. Certainly, but we have a problem. We have to fix it. All right? We don't have all the answers. Certainly. Certainly. But we know that the administrators and the educators who would work with us would share ideas and we are able to collaborate. So the ideas that we are going to share would involve the whole idea of the science of reading, which is a thrust in education now. We're looking at the science of reading. We are also going to talk about phonemic awareness, phonics instruction, we're going to talk about comprehension and fluency strategies. Now I'm saying talk about, but there is going to be more than talking about these things. The people from Grenada who come, you know, would be encouraged to write um, a piece. Yeah, and produce and their own turn, book. Yes, right, and, and that can go, you know, much further. So we are looking at that. And of course, assessment is important. The summit is the pet project of Shellon Christian, educational consultant and founder of the SVC Tutors, a US-based company which provides services such as academic intervention support and special education services to public schools in New York. Christian explained that the intention is to have ongoing training and sessions with educators and parents to ensure continuous monitoring and development of Caribbean literacy. This 
summit will be an, an annual event. Yes. However, there, Lynette and I have other plans. You know, we have workshops that we will um, do with parents. We'll have for teacher based on their grade levels. Mm -hmm. We have um, we have numerous activities. We have a number of activities planned for everybody. Everybody. We're talking about parents, teachers. And we may even go into some sessions where we'll do with the kids themselves because sometimes the kids need the work, kids need the workshop too. Mm -hmm. So we'll also be targeting the kids at some point. Yeah. So when we talk literacy, as Lynette rightly said, we're talking everybody. This summit will be held under the theme making an impact with literacy. If you're interested in joining this conference and joining this summit. You can register at svctutors.com. Again, svctutors.com. And for the teachers, for the parents, for everyone that will be attending, you will never have ever, ever regret attending this um, summit. Yes. We have a lot of, a lot to share with you and most importantly, we're willing to learn with and from you. Come join us so we can share, get with us, and we can do great things. The networking would really be wonderful. Participants will also get the opportunity to meet with vendors and be exposed to modern literacy materials. A certificate of participation will be issued at the end of the summit. And finally in the news, the Ministry of Health is calling for blood donors to support its annual blood donation drive to increase supply for the expected influx of patients at the hospital and health facilities during the festive season. Public Relations Officer for the Ministry of Health, Kevin Fedrick, explained that the drive is being held out of an abundance of caution to facilitate any major accident that may require health officials to use available blood. He said it is a matter of replenishing and ensuring that supplies are adequate during the carnival season. Around the festive season, there's an increase in accidents, motor vehicle accidents. There, there's also an increase uh, um, you know, in acts of violence that may result in choppings and stabbings and so forth. And notwithstanding that, our regular uh, um, patients you know, may from time to time require blood. So what we do is that simple, we just embark on a blood donation drive to ensure that our blood bank and its supplies remains at its optimum. So it's not that we do not have blood, but we are acting that way, as I said, as we would have done in the past, out of an abundance of caution. Moreover, last weekend, um, the emancipation weekend, um, there was an increase for blood. Um, um, persons who who came in for, you know, accidents, you know, and, and, and stabbings and choppings and so forth, they required blood. So as we, fast as we are, we are using what we have in our bank, it is also important that we replenish what we have. And so that's, that's the whole um, um, purpose for doing what we are doing right now by calling on persons, you know, to come forward. Frederick says the ministry is seeking blood type O negative and positive. However, we prefer if we can get, you know, the O um, uh, um, negative and positive, you know, um, um, but we are calling on everyone out there, regardless of what it is, please come forward and donate blood. Now, we know that one pint of blood can save, uh, save three lives. That's scientifically proven. So the more we have, it's better for everyone. And with that story, we come to the end of the National Report for Thursday, August 4th, 2022. On behalf of the entire news and production team, I am Sharia Noel, thanking you for viewing.